it's a pleasure to be here. Looking forward to talking a little bit about the consumer perspective, right? We've got a lot of experts in the room. Uh, we've heard from a lot of experts in a lot of different cap uh, capacities. But one of the exciting things about Nielsen is we get to bring some other voices into this conversation. Uh, I come from Nielsen's Media Lab, so to the MIT Media Lab from the Nielsen Media Lab, uh, where we work with Nielsen's various clients to help them understand how to make use of new and exciting uh, technology and trends, AR being one of them. And so whenever we're looking at a new piece of technology, we really look at it uh, through maybe a couple different ways primarily. So one is as a research tool, right? How can we use this technology to answer the questions we're already exploring? And then the second is as a research subject. So we can do new research, conduct new studies uh, to understand that technology in itself. And so AR is no different. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we might be able to use AR as a research tool. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about some research we've done about AR itself. So first, as a research tool. Um, to draw an analogy to some of the work we've done with virtual reality, uh, AR and immersive simulations in general can be used to recreate complex settings. So what we have up here uh, is an example of a driving simulation that we were using uh, to under or we were using to understand how the commuter experience functions, specifically how responsive people are to advertising uh, radio ads uh, while they're going through a driving. Uh, scenario. We were curious whether people while driving more, were more receptive to ads that were for automobiles than for food. Uh, we had a similar uh, experience that was a cooking simulation where we also uh, played ads for automobiles and food. We saw a uh, directional uh, relationship, which is really interesting. Another way that immersive simulations can be valuable is that you can dynamically randomize different characteristics. So this individual here is a respondent in a research design where we were randomly changing uh, billboards within his environment uh, so we could understand not just how effective the creative itself is, but how effective uh, uh, the billboard and the environment is for creative. You could see how AR would allow uh, an even more realistic simulation where you could actually replace uh, in uh, reality these different scenarios. And then finally, uh, as another example of how we could use AR as a tool, again, an analogy to, to VR, this is a, a, a shot from um, a research facility we use uh, in CBS Television City in Vegas. Uh, and what we can do is we can bring people from all over the country, right, all over the world that are visiting Vegas, and then we bring them into a facility and using VR and other uh, uh, technologies, so including AR, uh, we can then place them in a wide variety of, of scenarios, right? So from, from anywhere to anywhere, uh, and uh, able to do that at scale in a new and exciting way. So that's a little bit about AR as a research tool and how we can think about that. Now let's talk about it as a research subject. So a quick, a quick poll, just to get a sense for the room. You can't go to a Nielsen talk and not have us try to collect some data from you. Um, so how many people think the number of adults in the US that use AR each month is under 5%? Okay, so most of the room really, between five and 20%, nobody. 20% plus, like one person, cool. So before we even think about that question, right, there's, there's a bit of a challenge in that question, which maybe it's a bit of a trick, right? I didn't really talk about what AR is. Uh, and different people talk about it differently. I'm sure we could talk about it in this room, try to come up with the definition. Individuals have different ones. We could look up on Wikipedia, right, try to see what they say. Uh, I said it a bit at the beginning, but at Nielsen, we try to go to the consumer and understand what their definition is and use that to inform what we're talking about. So when we say, what is augmented reality, uh, we try to figure that out. We asked uh, a, a community, Nielsen has a media enthusiast community of people that like to give their feedback on different questions around technology and trends. Um, this is a big old list. We're going to focus on four different categories of responses. One is that some people get the question, I think, I won't say right or wrong, but consistent with how I think other folks in this room would define it, right? Um, that it's involving reality and overlaying some digital elements uh, on that, whether that's information, whether that's imagery. Um, oftentimes, devices are involved. This is probably the least interesting category, right? Uh, another thing that we find is some people confuse AR with other technologies. So virtual reality, pe people just uh, uh, associating it very strongly with virtual reality, not seeing the distinction, um, is, is one common perspective. Um, uh, this, one of these quotes here is uh, calling 
AR, the step beyond virtual reality, where the headgear glasses shut out everything but what's projected for viewing. That's, it sounds like they have the two concepts flipped, potentially. And then something made by AI. Uh, I, I feel like probably they get the sense that we're playing buzzword bingo, right? And you're trying to bring different things in. So th there's a little bit of confusion whenever we're talking about uh, technology. Third category, I think, is my favorite, uh, which is people that just have very broad definitions of augmented reality, right? So like, how many people in here, if you were a professor and you had a test on like what, list me an example of AR, would include like 3D glasses, like is that a type of AR? Does anyone, would anyone consider that? Or surround sound speakers? Um, rumble chairs, right? Uh, we've got one that, uh, that basically is listing all media types, uh, you know, the internet, uh, websites, cable TV, uh, and then something that enhances reality, which I think is just, it's about as broad as you can get, right? Basically the definition of a tool. Uh, so like chimpanzees, right, will chew on the edges of sticks, dip that in beehives, right? That's, that's augmenting reality in a way. Or, or have chimps created augmented reality? Probably not. I don't think that's a definition most of us use. And then the obligatory respondents say the darndest things slide. Uh, people who think augmented reality is sort of like distortion uh, within reality shows. Uh, believe it or not, a lot of people associated with biased opinions, sort of this fake news idea, alternative facts, right? Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, again, a, a dig at millennials, which uh, one in 500 people, I guess, will, will, will take the opportunity to do that. Um, so those are the four different opportunities, or the four different descriptions that we saw folks give. Uh, but that doesn't really answer the question from, from any perspective, right? But it, it does suggest that, depending on the definition we use, it makes a big difference. So we did have a question, too, where we listed a whole bunch of apps, and we asked people, do you think this is augmented reality? And the app that people selected most uh, was one that was a bit surprising. 61% um, of people said that a mapping app um, that, that we had listed, a popular mapping app, uh, counted as augmented reality. And you think about it, right? It's, it's kind of crazy, but also at the same point, like you're using, it's placing you within society, it's overlaying information about you, right? Um, and of course, as Nielsen, we, we do have statistics on uh, the usage of mapping apps. And so if we, if we adopt that definition, again, the consumer definition of what AR is, uh, we'll find that over 100 million uh, American adults are using AR today. So that's, and, and that's over half uh, uh, of, of the US adult population using AR. So as leaders in AR, congratulations, you guys have, uh, you've achieved penetration. Um, it's pretty cool, right? Um, so the, the takeaway of this talk is not necessarily, uh, you know, to, to leave here believing that, uh, you know, over half of Americans are already using AR or to leave believing that chimps have created augmented reality and have used it. Some people just walked in there and probably like, wait, what's that about? Um, uh, but, but it is that... Uh, the, the main point is that we should consider the definitions and terminology we're using, and we should think about how the people that aren't represented within these spaces uh, think about these terms so that we can really adequately uh, serve that population. Um, so thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, please reach out if you have any questions, want to talk more. <laughs>